Lesson 7.3 has us continuing on with exponential functions, now involving base e. In the last example from 7.1 and 7.2, we talked about compound interest. The more times a bank will compound your money per year, the more interest you earn. It's not likely a bank will do that, but if the interest goes on continuously forever and ever, that means it would approach infinity. If n approaches infinity, this parenthesis approaches a unique value of 2.71828 repeating. That's what e represents. So the symbol e is kind of like pi. It, it approximates a decimal, and we use e in a variety of equations. To find e on your calculator, you want to look for where you see an log or an ln button. E is going to be right around that kind of button set. So it might be on the left hand side, it might be up at the top. For some of your calculators you may have to press the LOG button and arrow down until you find E. Once you find E, you're going to be asked to raise it to a power. So let's raise it to the first power and see what we get. E to the first power should be that decimal 2.71828 repeating. It just goes on and on and on. Now we'll use that value in a variety of ways. You'll notice in our exponential model, we can plug in E instead of B, and it can model both growth and decay. Here's how it works. If the exponent, I don't know why I put a parenthesis there, let's forget, or not a parenthesis, a quote. If X is positive or has a positive out in front, then you know your graph is going to model a growth function. The trade-off is, is if x has a negative in front, then that is going to represent a decay model for base e. So notice it's the same kind of template and it looks very similar to y equals a times b to the x. Now our base is that e constant or that e value. We can model both growth and decay. When we work with base e, we treat it like a variable. We can simplify and evaluate. For the simplify part, think properties of exponents. Base e is just like any variable. If you multiply bases together, we combine the exponents by adding. e to the 4 plus 5 power would be e to the 9th power, and that's your simplified base. If you have an exponent on the inside with e being raised to the outside exponent, we multiply. e to the 2 times 6 would be e to the 12th. That's a 12 right there. Make sure that's clear. There we go. In the next example, notice we have coefficients out in front of e. In this case, we're just going to work with those coefficients first. 24 divided by 6, 6 goes into itself once and goes into 24 four times. That would give us 4. And then if we divide e, we're going to take the numerator minus denominator. That would be e to the 8 minus 2 power, which is 4 times e to the 6th. And if we multiply with bases and number values as coefficients, we're just going to multiply the 5 and the negative 7, giving us a coefficient of negative 35. Now this next part's kind of unique. The e's are technically being multiplied together, by definition, we would add those exponents, but they're not like terms. So if we add them, we get 4 plus negative 9x or 4 minus 9x. I know that's a really unique looking answer, but that's what you'd get for the product of the parentheses up above. When asked to evaluate, whoops, let's get rid of that. Sorry, I wanted to move my screen, not color on it. When asked to evaluate, this is where you're going to want to have a calculator and we're going to round to the nearest four decimal places. So we're going to go to the ten thousandths place. We'll say round to four places. Please grab your calculator and let's enter this in together. e to the third power. You're going to want e to show up on your calculator and then get the little caret guy to show up. Raise it to the third power. That means that 2.71828 decimal times itself times itself. You should get approximately 20.0855 if we round to four decimal places. 
Make sure you can get that to show up on your calculator. If you can't find it, please ask before you start your assignment tomorrow. e to the negative 2 over 5. Again, this is going to be tricky because of the rational exponent. If we're just plugging this into our calculator to evaluate, make sure you put the exponent in parentheses. So we'll have our e, we'll raise it, and then parentheses, negative 2 divided by 5. This answer should be quite a bit smaller. Technically, that negative exponent means we're taking the reciprocal of e, and that would be in the bottom of the fraction. Our answer is approximately 0 0.6703. So if e has a negative exponent, notice the output is quite a bit smaller. No lesson would be complete without an application problem. It says the number of camera phones shipped globally is modeled by the equation y equals 1.28 times e to the 1.31x power, where x is the number of years since 2005, and y is the number of camera phones in millions. How many cameras would be sh or camera phones would be shipped this year? Well, this year is the year 2022. We're not going to plug in 2022 for x because x stands for the years since 2005. So we'll actually plug in x equals 17 if we do 2022 minus 2005. Plugging that in, we'd have y equals 1.28 times base e to the 1.31 times 17 power. Again, be careful how you enter this in. Since our exponent has a product, make sure to put that in parentheses. That's a parenthesis right there. There we go. So this is going to be 1.28. And you can actually just find that e and have it show up right there. And on most calculators, it either puts you up in the exponent location or it gives you the caret guy. And then remember, just have a parenthesis, 1.31 times 17 we actually get a really big answer for this. If we figure out, or if we look at, let's see, I got 6011018735.8839. Now remember, it says it's in millions. So what that means is we have to multiply this answer by a million. That's crazy. We're going to move the decimal over six times. That would mean we have 6011018758839, and that's only four decimals, so we need to add two zeros. If I put my commas after every three, that's, let's see, it's hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. That's 601 trillion phones. I'm pretty sure this model is skewed a little bit. It probably was more in 2005 and I'm guessing it would have tapered off this year. That's a lot of camera phones. Yikes. And I think that's a good point to end our video. We'll finish the interest problem that's at the bottom tomorrow in class.